Hi, it's Saturday, October 5th. This is a satellite loop of the Gulf of Mexico, and we have a new storm to begin tracking in the southwestern Gulf as Florida and much of the southeastern U.S. is still reeling from the impacts of Hurricane Helene just a little while ago. Unfortunately, we can't catch a break here, and we will be watching a new storm that is likely to move toward Florida across the Gulf of Mexico over the next three to four days. This is Tropical Depression 14. Advisories were just initiated by the National Hurricane Center this morning before this video, and this has formed a little bit more quickly than had been expected two to three days ago. There was an old frontal boundary draped across the northwestern Gulf, and the remnants of an old eastern Pacific storm came up through the Bay of Campeche, and the two have combined to generate rotation in this field of deep moisture in the western Gulf. You can see thunderstorm activity has concentrated, and we're starting to see rotation southwesterly winds here arcing around into easterly winds, and the cold air is kind of coming down on the back side forming this area of circulation. Models were really unsure whether anything would actually develop here, but we have seen this congeal in short order over the last 24 hours. This is the close-in loop. Just to show you that uh, there is indeed uh, wind wrapping around on this eastern side, and there is a closed circulation here. It's partially obscured by this ball of deep thunderstorms, mostly weighted to the western side of the circulation. It's probably centered somewhere in here with most of the thunderstorms in this band on the north side and this ball weighted toward the west. This is a microwave image from a few hours ago just showing this arcing band of convection on the western side. And then you'll see a couple of banding features right in there, which kind of show you that the circulation is tucked under this eastern side of the existing ball of thunderstorms. So we don't yet have a complete inner core, but as always with these developing systems, we will be watching carefully over the coming 24 to 48 hours how quickly thunderstorms can begin symmetrizing around the entirety of the circulation instead of just the northern and western side. As soon as this eastern side begins to fill in, we will likely see a structure that facilitates quicker intensification. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing that the system is in a generally favorable environment right now. The upper level flow consists of the upper level uh, westerlies over the north gulf coast wrapping around into south or northeasterlies on the back side. This is kind of a ridge axis in the upper levels in here and tropical depression 14 is essentially right under that ridge axis. So vertical shear is pretty light in here and in general the environment is favorable as it starts moving off toward the east across the western Gulf of Mexico over the next day or two. Now things are going to change a little bit over time. As the system begins to gain latitude, it's going to be moving north of east, so potentially east-northeast or northeast during its journey across the Gulf. So it will gain latitude and start getting closer to these westerlies, and the westerlies are also likely to strengthen and shift south. This is the GFS surface dew point plot from right now showing that there's a big cyclone over southern Canada with a cold front draped down into the Rockies. And what you're going to see here is this cold air is going to push southeastward into the southern U.S. over the next couple of days. Tropical Depression 14 is tucked down here in the Gulf of Mexico. But as this cold air pushes toward the south, you'll see these green and blue colors push southward. And because of this deposition of cold air into this part of the country, it's going to increase the thermal wind and therefore the strength of the westerly jet over the southern U.S. and the northern Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to see upper level westerlies increase as the storm begins to cross the Gulf. If we look at those upper level winds, this is where the storm is at the analysis time on the GFS, light wind above it. You'll see over time the storm, TD14, will show up as a red L here, and you'll start to see these westerlies near and north of it begin to increase darker blues, start to show up and push toward the south. So by the time the storm is moving into the eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico, there's more upper-level wind coming into its backside from the west. The trouble is that within the next two to three days, conditions are favorable enough to allow this to strengthen likely into a hurricane. You know, during this time when it's beginning its journey, if I draw a sounding here, you'll actually see that there is pretty light values of shear in this part of the Gulf, about four knots on this particular forecast as it starts to make its journey toward the Yucatan Peninsula. As it moves into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, shear values start to increase. So if I do a so sounding average over the vortex again, you'll see that the, that the shear has increased to moderate values of about 13 to 15 knots. And as it approaches Florida, shear gets stronger and the sounding will show that it's now in excess of 30 knots around the time that the storm is hitting the Florida Peninsula. So we're expecting it to move 
into this belt of westerlies and encounter more hostile conditions, and one would hope that this will limit TD-14's intensification. The trouble is that it has time to get strong in the middle of the Gulf, and then by the time it starts weakening, it may already be powerful heading toward Florida. So since yesterday, you know, now that the storm is coming together pretty early on here, it's likely to intensify significantly over the next two to three days, become a hurricane, and then even if it's weakening on approach to Florida, we're likely to see pretty significant impacts moving into the eastern Gulf Coast around Tuesday night through Thursday morning. We can see how different models handle the shear here, and there's a range of possible outcomes. We're going to be kind of on a knife's edge where the storm may become mature, and then it's interacting with levels of shear that may, if they're a little bit stronger, may start destroying the inner core of the storm. But if they're just a little bit weaker, the core of the storm may remain intact through landfall, and models disagree on this point right now. This is the GFS showing a symmetric inner core of dark green moisture as it's in the middle of the Gulf, and you'll see that as it approaches Florida, although there is some asymmetry starting to show up with more green to the northeast and a little more brown coloring to the southwest, this inner core holds together, and so on this model, it actually moves toward Florida as a strong hurricane not that far from its peak intensity. Compare that to a different model like the ECMWF, and you see that it actually struggles with the shear even earlier on, where it's already asymmetric with the green on the northwest side very early in the journey, and that remains true through the time that it hits Florida, where you can see there's strong brown dry colors on the south side. This doesn't have a complete eye wall or inner core on this particular model, and it's a much weaker hurricane as it moves into Florida on that kind of forecast. This is the high-resolution NOAA HALFS model meant for modeling hurricanes, and in three days on early Tuesday morning, you can see the symmetric inner core. We have a complete eye wall here on the model. As it moves toward Florida, though, you will see that the dry air is able to punch in and hollow out that inner core. You have a dry spot with brown colors uh, before the storm is able to cross the Florida coastline. And so you do have a weakening storm here, but again, you can see that pressure value, 950 millibars. This is a powerful hurricane that has begun to weaken, but would still bring severe impacts to this area that it's moving into. And so if we do, in fact, get a scenario like this, significant impacts are expected regardless of the exact intensity at landfall. So there's a range of possible outcomes here. This could be a, you know, a lower end hurricane or a higher end hurricane. I don't think we have confidence on either one of those yet, but a hurricane nonetheless heading into a vulnerable piece of coastline for storm surge and coastal flooding especially, uh, that's something for people to, to be heads up on and be planning for now while we still have three to four days for this to come in. This is the ECMWF ensemble showing the possible tracks of this storm. This is TD-14's possible locations highlighted in red numbers by the ensemble on Monday morning. So you can see that even by, by Monday morning, it hasn't yet started making its final move toward Florida. In fact, it could be getting kind of close to the northwestern Yucatan Peninsula during this time. And as we head toward Tuesday morning, you can see it's moving north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Some disagreement about how close to the coast it will be. And then it makes its move toward Florida. Now you'll notice that there's quite a forward speed spread here. Some of the members are quite fast and they arrive in Florida by Wednesday morning, but others are lagging behind. This is due to disagreement about that, that cold front and how much the westerly steering flow accelerates over the Gulf due to the cold air to the north. And modeling is still figuring this out. And at four days out, we expect some uncertainty in both the timing and the location of landfall. So you see quite a spread in the possible locations of the storm by this time, but you can see that the earliest possible arrival is Wednesday morning, and then the later members start arriving on Thursday night on some of these slower forecasts. So to be determined on the actual timing of landfall, but be ready for conditions to be deteriorating as soon as Tuesday night out ahead of the storm in Florida. So that's the kind of preparation window that folks have here. You can see that there's also, you know, spread all along the western Florida coastline. So exactly who gets the landfall, still unsure. Four days out, we're not going to be sure. But you can see that this general area needs to be prepared for a possible hurricane strike. This is the National Hurricane Center official forecast for TD-14, the inaugural forecast for this storm. You can see that forecast for an eastward motion. We're pretty confident on this in general, going into the central gulf and strengthening into a hurricane by Monday. And you can see it accelerate toward Florida, moving east, northeastward, or northeastward, and arriving by Wednesday morning 
when they forecast an intensity of 110 mile per hour max winds. This would make it a category two hurricane, just under category three strength. As we just discussed, there's a balance of hostile and favorable conditions that will make this difficult to pin down for now. There's a range of max intensities at Florida landfall, but it's likely to be a hurricane either way based on how early it's developing now. So we're going to see significant impacts on a track like this. You know, this is a storm surge prone section of coastline. We just went through this with Helene. I know everyone's fatigued, but we may be seeing similar impacts again in some of these areas, and they could be worse given that Helene wasn't a direct strike, but this will be. So some of these sections of coastline really need to be heads up on this and preparing before this comes in. Your planning window, your safe planning window, is essentially through Tuesday afternoon. This is the earliest possible arrival time of tropical storm force winds, according to NHC's modeling. And so you can see that these could arrive 40 mile per hour or stronger winds as early as Tuesday afternoon in western Florida. Could be later than that, but this is the earliest reasonable arrival time. And you can see the corridor of risk, the 50-50 uh, chances of tropical storm force wind in dark brown and red colors encompasses much of the Florida Peninsula. You know, there could be shifts in the track either to the north or toward the south. Right now, the track is into Sarasota, but it may not stay that way because this is a four day forecast. And so we have some time and some adjustments could be made. But the general projection of the future that this is coming into the Florida area is pretty solid right now. And so folks in this area should be getting prepared as the storm starts to cross the Gulf. That's about it for this video. We'll track TD14 as it starts to get together and strengthen on its way across the Gulf. Unfortunately, another hurricane threat to Florida. Hate to see it, but we've got to get prepared just in case the storm comes into your location. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.